If you are seeking happiness and acceptance but not finding it in the world, this podcast shows you how to change everything in your life, soul, mind, and body. You can change anything with God, your prayer life, fighting the spiritual battle, controlling your thoughts, and changing your body, becoming exactly who God created you to be, joyful, loving, peaceful, with a strong will and a healthy body. Each day on Reality Reflections with Kendra Von Esch, that's me, we will walk the journey together. I will be here to support and love you through the good times and the bad as I share the ups and downs of my life and help you fight the battles in yours. I love you all. Find something more with God, soul, mind, and body, and have a blessed and inspired day. Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. Ready to get 30, 30, ready to get 30, ready to get 20, 20, 20, ready to get 20, 20, ready to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month. So give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 up front for three months plus taxes and fees. Promote for new customers for limited time. Unlimited more than 40 gigabytes per month. Slows. Full terms at mintmobile.com. Hello, everyone. Well, I'm down at the gas station, which is about three minutes away from my house. And they have everything here. They even have a little restaurant-ish thing, but it's not really a restaurant. It's just a place where you can get burgers, grilled cheese, things like that. So any workers that come to my house and want lunch, I'm like, hey, three miles away, there are no restaurants by me. You really have to take a little bit of a drive, like 30 to 40 minutes, to get any kind of restaurant service. But anyway... The reason I'm here is because I cannot get my one bar today. I don't know what's going on. It's super overcast. It's not raining. So after probably 12 times of rebooting my phone, I decided I'm just going to have to go down to the gas station. There's nowhere really to park on the side of the road. And I'm pretty grateful that I have any service. The reason I don't get it, I think, is because I'm up at the top of the hill, maybe above where the signal is. So I got to figure that out. And I still don't have high speed internet service, but I did get a message yesterday saying that within two weeks, I hope it's sooner, (laughs) they're going to be bringing it up to the house. And then after that, they actually need me there to do the install. And I will be so excited to have an internet service rather than trying to go through my data with my phone. It's crazy. Okay. So Let's get beyond all that's going on here in my life and talk about the beautiful feast that we have today. It is the feast of the visitation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. I love Mary. We should be imitating Mary, where we are peaceful and calm and humble when it comes to everything that's going on in our lives. So the visitation is Right after, right after St. Gabriel visited Mary, basically asking her to be the mother of God, saying that she's full of grace. And within that whole conversation, he says, oh, by the way, anything is possible with God. Your cousin Elizabeth, who was barren, is six months pregnant. So after the angel leaves, after the Holy Spirit overshadows Mary, and now she has conceived Jesus, she decides she's going to go up to the hill country. Now, people, this is not just a little phrase. It is a treacherous journey to go to the hill country. And especially back then, no cars. I'm sure she's riding a donkey. They don't say that St. Joseph was with her, but I can't imagine that he wasn't. So it was a rough ride for her to get up there. And then she stays for three months to basically bring Elizabeth in to the birth of St. John the Baptist within her belly, her womb. That's when Mary walks in and Elizabeth says, Whoa, who am I to be in the presence and to be greeted by the mother of God? And it's amazing when you think about all that because she was filled with the Holy Spirit and so was St. John in her womb who leaped with joy. Amazing. So what is the fruit of this story? 
Love thy neighbor. To be generous, to be kind, to be offering up your time, your talent, and your treasure. Sometimes people need money. Sometimes people need your help. Sometimes people just need you to listen and to be there. And this isn't just the people that we know. This is also the people that God puts in our life. It's called servant leadership. So does your life reflect that? Do you serve others by helping them, by being available to them, by lending them money if you have it? I'm not saying that everyone has an abundance of money, but in, in the end, do you consider helping others in whatever way you can? That's really what life is all about. If we all lived like servant leadership people, we probably wouldn't even need money. Think about it. If you had talent to raise cows and you had talent to plant, you know, fruits and vegetables or take care of trees and someone was a masonry and was able to build stone fireplaces and someone else had the ability to move the earth like this guy, this excavator guy that's doing my stuff at my house, like, and you were able to take care of kids and someone else was able to teach math. And this was how God wanted us to live. And look at it. Look at the life and the world around us. Like some people don't even know their own neighbors. And I find that so sad. And I used to be like that. I used to be totally about myself. Like, hey, if it isn't about me, I'm not going to do it. I would make plans and I would cancel at the last minute. How rude is that? Because I was just like, nah, I don't really want to go out. I don't really want to see you people. And that is not servant leadership. I know a lot of people are loners, and I know a lot of people don't have a lot of friends. That's me. I have a lot of acquaintances. But I have a fistful, if that, of people who know me to the core. Most of my viewers and listeners know me to the core, too, but we don't hang out together, in other words. There's nothing anymore that I will ever hide from anyone, period especially my followers, because I need you all to know that the road has its ups and downs and that Satan really wants you to keep secrets. Okay, I'm going off on a tangent here. Let's get back to servant leadership. Look at yourself. What are your talents? Do you have a beautiful voice? Can you play an instrument? Are you just offering yourself and your time to help people, people who are moving, people who, you know, need help with a bake sale? Are you offering up to bake? Are you donating your time to your church and your parish? All of these things, all of these things are how we live a servant leadership life. And then God, honestly, is going to pour out grace in yours. He's going to bless you for being generous and kind and offering up your time, your talent, and your treasure. So let's look at our life. Let's see how we can be kinder. That's really what it's all about. How can I be more kind to all of the people around me, including the checkout person at the grocery store, the person that you run your cart into at the shopping mall. Or, okay, you're not running around with a cart at the shopping mall. I'm using the grocery store at the same, <laughs> the grocery store and the cart. You know what I mean. The people that God puts in your path, were you Christ-like to them? I am actually contemplating and praying over something that this excavator guy brought to me today this morning. Am I going to be generous? Am I going to trust in God? Am I going to pray over this? Yes. I just don't want to get into it on this podcast, but it is challenging me to be that servant leader. And how amazing that today (laughs) 
is the readings. And today I get proposed with this. But we must pray through things. Let's not just do anything for everybody. Sometimes no is a good thing. It goes back to our charisms. Do we know what we're good at? If someone asks me to be an administrative assistant or to do any kind of bookkeeping, I'm going to say no. If someone wants me to set up a website, I am going to say no, because I don't really know how. But the other two also, I don't like it. I don't know how to do it. And I wouldn't want to screw something up for somebody else. You really got to know what you're good at, what you can offer. And you know this inherently. You do. In your heart, in your soul, you know what you're good at and you know what you can offer other people. And that's what it's all about, is offering something up without asking for something in return. That's the challenge. Okay, let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Oh, come Holy Spirit, come into our hearts, into our minds, into our souls, into our bodies so that we can all, all be servant leadership, servant leadership, (laughs) servant leaders in our life so that we can imitate Mary and drop things and do things for those that we love and who need our help. Help us not to be selfish. Help us to be open and to see you in everything, to see you in our life, that you are challenging us to be more kind, to be more generous, and to truly love thy neighbor. Even when we don't want to, that's when we need your spirit to fill us the most. Help us to imitate Mary. Mary, we pray to you to pray to Jesus, your beloved son, and ask him to give us the grace to be a good neighbor, to be a good family member, a good spouse, a good mother, father, friend, co-worker. Because with you, we can do anything. Heavenly Father, we are now going to pray for all of the people who have left us on this earth by name. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Mary, please pray for us to be humble and servant leaders. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, everyone. Back to work. On my hands and knees, with a razor blade knife, and a wire brush, trying to clean off all of the grout that is all over my floor, everywhere. It took me four hours just to do my bathroom and my bedroom, and I have the whole rest of the house to do. Yes, there's not grout everywhere, but boy, oh boy, this is exhausting. (laughs) And guess what? I have to be grateful for it. I have to know that I am blessed that I even have a house with a floor And I even have tile on my walls, even though grout's all over the place. I need to turn my anger and frustration over to God. Remember, don't curse your blessings. When you have stuff to do that you don't want to do, look at the blessings in your life that you have that stuff to do in your life. You know what I'm saying? That you've got a floor. Some people don't even have a home. It, be, it makes us more aware of every blessing that God has given us when we don't complain about the things that we have to do. And when we offer up those moments where we do have that spirit of 
ingratitude, really. Because that's about us. It's about us being selfish. And I don't want to curse my blessings. Pray your way through everything, people. Pay attention. Because if you're not looking at everything that's going on and managing your emotions, then you are just subconsciously walking through life. And as a friend of mine and I were talking the other day, hi Janine, we will just do what we always have done. And a lot of the time it's mindless, 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 just like eating seven cheesecakes. Okay, they were mini cheesecakes, not a full cheesecake, but even so, what do I need to do? Why, why would I mow down seven? It's because I wasn't even paying attention. And by the fourth one, I was kind of like, eh, these are getting old. And I ate three more. Pay attention. Be conscious. This is not a new age thing. It's not, you know, om, om, sitting with your legs crossed and you praying to the universe. We are going to be praying to God, the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, asking them, to pour grace into our heart. And we can also pray to all the holy angels and saints, our guardian angel and those souls in purgatory to pray for us and to protect us. You know, the evil one wants us to be living on our own, doesn't want us to be humble and give our life to God. So when we do, and we're not grateful, and we're complaining and whining and moaning and groaning, we are living for the other side because God wants us to be grateful even in the bad times, even in the worst of times. And the more you pray, the more, and the more you talk to God throughout your day, the more it's going to become normal, the more you can live with joy in all circumstances, as we talked about yesterday. But today, Let's just serve people without whining and moaning and groaning about it. And let's turn those emotions and those evil spirits over to God and say, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bind the spirit of anger, of frustration, of fear, anxiety, of worry, of selfishness. Cast it out and then ask the Heavenly Father to fill you with the Holy Spirit with love, with generosity, with kindness. And watch your heart change. Find something more with God, soul, mind, and body. And have a blessed and inspired day.